Hello, and a guten Erev Shabbos Hagadol. We are right before the great Shabbos that precedes the Yontif of Pesach. Normally, the Shabbos Hagadol sermon would be given, of course, in Shul. But unfortunately, due to the serious health considerations and uh, the sorry state of affairs that the entire world is engulfed in right now, we will have to make do with this video presentation of the Shabbos Haggadah Drasha. I would like to pose a question to all of you that I think would require all of us to think about. We all know what the Seder is about. It commemorates Yitzias Mitzrayim. It commemorates the exodus of the Jews from Egypt. Well, when did that happen? It happened on the first day of Pesach, the 15th of the month of Nisan. And we make the Seder on the night before. Why do we have the Seder and all of the associated mitzvahs being performed at night? Why not celebrate the Seder at the same time, precisely, that the Jewish people left Egypt? Now, some of you might be thinking, well, it's true that the Jews left Egypt uh, on the morning of uh, the first day of Pesach, but they really achieved their freedom during the night. And that would certainly be true. And that the only reason they didn't leave immediately was because they didn't want to give the impression that they were sneaking out under the cover of darkness. And they waited until the next morning to march out in full view of everyone, an impressive display of the almighty strength. But that really still begs the question, because the Jews did not receive their emancipation until after midnight. It had to be that way. It was exactly, precisely as the Torah tells us, at midnight, that the final plague of the ten plagues occurred, and it was at that time that Paro ran looking for Moshe and Aaron to tell him to leave. So if the plague of the firstborn happens at midnight, and Paro then starts looking for Moshe and Aaron and says, leave, well, then it's after midnight. We should begin the Seder at midnight because that's when the emancipation was achieved. That's when Paro said leave. But we don't. And we sit down to the Seder at the beginning of the night, at nightfall, after the stars come out, but still at night. And we are urged by the halacha, and it requires us to do all of the mitzvahs of the Seder and complete them before the middle of the night. The Ramah in the Shulchan Aruch even says that it applies to the halal that's recited near the end of the Seder. So why are all the mitzvahs uh, performed and required to be observed in celebration of the emancipation from Egypt that doesn't take place till after midnight, and yet we sit down and we're told, try to complete the whole Seder before Chatzos, before the middle of the night. I would like to suggest a perspective about our celebration. We are not celebrating having left Egypt. We are not celebrating leaving Egypt. We are celebrating and recreating the first Seder that was celebrated. That first Seder was celebrated in Egypt by the Jews before the emancipation took place. The Jews were commanded on the first day of Nisan, two weeks beforehand, to go and take a lamb or a goat, which they did on the 10th day of the month of Nisan, and that corresponds to the day, day of the week being Shabbos. It occurs this year the same way. The 10th of Nisan is on Shabbos. 
And the Jews were very courageous in taking a goat or a lamb for a Pesach offering because they were challenged by the Egyptian society that they dwelt in amidst them. What are you doing? And they told them that God commanded us to take this animal and designate it as an offering and we're going to be celebrating a Seder and eating of its meat. It was a courageous act on their part because the Egyptians looked at that animal as a divine entity. And for the Jewish people to do that took courage. They also were separating themselves. Mishchu u'kechu lochem tzayin. Chazal tell us that that reflects the Jewish people actually repenting and giving up idol worship that they unfortunately had also participated in uh, over the years. And now they were acting courageously and taking a lamb in anticipation of their leaving Egypt. And take a look at how in Parshish Bo and how the Torah describes how they're commanded to celebrate that Seder. The Kacha Sochlu also. And this is how you should eat it. Mosnechem chagurem, nalechem biraglechem, umalkelchem biyetchem. They should eat it in a state of readiness. Their bags were packed. They were ready to go, shoes on their feet, and they're ready to march out. Nothing happened yet. It was the night, this what we would call the Seder night, but they weren't freed yet. That wasn't to happen until hours later, after Chatzos, after the middle of the night. But they were so confident that it was going to happen that they're already celebrating the exodus, their freedom, the gift that the Almighty is giving to them. And in anticipation about what's going to happen, they celebrate before it even happens. This idea of anticipation and the celebration is the key, if you wish, nature, inherent nature of what the Seder is all about. Because to celebrate the Jews having already left Egypt, everybody loves a winner. You don't, that's, uh, people join in, they already see the person's a winner. And the Jewish people were winners, they were leaving. And the Torah describes how uh, the Egyptians and other nations uh, looked at the Jewish people leaving Egypt. Multitudes of people joined in because everybody loves the winner and they're marching out and they had already seen all the other plagues that had happened and the miracles. They're joining the Jewish people. But the Jews celebrated before it happened, the night before. They were so confident that it was going to take place. And perhaps that's why the mitzvahs have to be performed when we recreate it. We're recreating not so much the Jews having left already. We're recreating the anticipation and the faith that the Jewish people had at that time in, in looking forward to what was happening and the confidence that they had because of the faith that the Almighty would provide for them. If you need to relate to it, Let's just give a example of where somebody is involved, let's say, in some mega real estate deal uh, in New York City and Manhattan real estate. And the, the deal involves uh, $800 million. And the two parties have been working on this deal for many months, maybe even years. And now finally, all the pieces have come together, all the financing, and the buyers are going to be paying the $800 million and the closing is taking place in a conference room in a bank. And all the parties are there along with their lawyers and all the documents are signed. And then the buyers hand over an $800 million check, a bank check, to the sellers. The sellers accept it, they shake hands, and then they go and they celebrate. But why should they celebrate? They didn't get anything yet. They just got a check. It's a piece of paper. But no, they don't have to worry about it. It was a bank check. And so they could go deposit it. And of course the check is going to be good and the money will clear. It's a bank check. 
That's how confident they are. So even though technically, just by virtue of the fact that they're holding the piece of paper that says paid to the order of whatever the name of their company is or person in their name, they're confident. It's good. There's no question we can already celebrate. This is a bank check. And Lahavdil, Klal Yisrael was so sure that this was going to happen. Moshe told them about it. And God was going to make sure that the emancipation would take place. And so they already celebrated. They already celebrated their Pesach Seder before it happened. And when we do that, and we sit down to the Seder, that's what we're doing as well. We are recreating and hopefully inspiring ourselves to once again have a little bit of that faith, of that confidence, and anticipate grand and great things for the Jewish people. The Seder night is described in the Chumash, also in Parshas Bo, as a Leil Shimurim. Leil Shimurim Hu Lashem Lahotziam Me'eretz Mitzrayim. Hu Halayla Hazeh Shimurim Lachol B'nei Yisrael L'Dorosam. What does that mean? It is a night of anticipation for God to take out the Jewish people from Egypt. It's this night that is a, a night of anticipation for the Jewish people for all generations. Now the word shamar, which is at the root of the word shimurim, also means to protect. And we, in fact, see the night of Pesach as a night of protection because the Jews were protected during the plague of the firstborn. The Jews were protected, and the angel of death passed over. That's where we have the name Passover or Pesach for this holiday, because the Jewish people's protection earned by virtue of the Malach, the angel, passing over, and that's how they were, in fact, protected. And it's remained a night of protection to this very day. We have certain practices that reflect that. If it's the night of the Seder should coincide with a Friday night, we leave out the bracha me'ain sheva at the davening uh, because that's meant to ensure protection for people when walking home from shul. And on the night of Pesach, the Seder night, it's Leil Shimurim. We don't have to worry about that. Another example of Leil Shimurim is our opening the door. Yes, we open it up for Elio, but opening the door is done as a demonstration of an act of courage on the part of the Jewish people to show that they feel protected. They don't need to sit behind the door that's locked. We can open it up. God is protecting us. And still another example of it being a Leil Shimurim is that when we go to sleep at night, there are usually a number of prayers that we recite. On the night of Pesach, when it's Leil Shimurim, a night of protection, we don't have to recite all of the prayers. Many of them are deleted. And we just say the opening paragraph of the Shema, as well as the Bracha of Hamapil. But the other prayers that are there to ensure a restful sleep and protection, and that we don't have to worry about because it's Leil Shimurim, it's a night of protection. But the word Shimurim also means to anticipate. The word Shamar means that. You may remember when Yosef told his dreams uh, to his brothers in the book of Bereshus, his brothers were very jealous, and uh, that, of course, caused hatred. And Yaakov uh, tried to uh, placate them. but. The Torah says that although he didn't, he exhibited doubts as to whether or not the dreams were really true, in his own heart and mind, Va'oviv Shamar Es Hadavar, Yaakov Avinu actually was anticipating. He recognized that Yosef's dreams were really a prophecy. And he looked forward to when this would happen and become a reality. So you see there how the word Shamar means to anticipate. And over here in Book of Shmos and Parshas Bo, Rashi also says that's how we should understand 
Leil Shimurim. Shahoya Akodesh Baruchu Shomer Umitsapelo Lekayim Haftochoso Lahotsiyam Me Eretz Mitzrayim. God himself was anticipating. He could hardly wait for it to happen. He was looking forward to when he could fulfill his promise to take the Jews out of Egypt. And that's why it was a Leil Shimurim, a night of anticipation for God. And it became also a night of Shimurim for the Jewish people, for all generations, a night for them to anticipate as well, anticipate their redemption. This is perhaps why we invite Eliyahu to the Seder, because we're looking forward to the ultimate redemption. And as you know, that's Eliyahu's job. We say it in the Haftorah. It's not that we, we end. It's the last prophecy that the Jewish people had. Behold, I'm going to send, says the Almighty, Elio Hanavi. And Elijah is going to be sent to tell the Jewish people, as we mentioned this in our benching, He's going to, in fact, inform us of salvations, of comfort, and about the wonderful redemption that's going to happen. That's Elio Hanavi's job. And we invite him into the Seder. Because at the end of the Seder, right before we say the last paragraphs of the Hallel, those paragraphs that deal with the future, we want Elio to come in and we want his spirit to infuse the Seder. And we want our recital of Hallel to reflect that, that confidence, that faith, that ultimately it's going to happen. And that's why we have this night as a Leil Shimurim. It's a night of anticipation. Many years ago, I think now it's close to 40 years ago, I was once at a community meeting. And uh, it was a meeting that uh, only had Jews there, and I was the only Orthodox Jew that was there. And it took place right after Pesach. I came to the meeting just a few minutes before it was scheduled to begin, and a number of people were there already. And one of the, the Jews, who was not at all observant Jew, uh, they greeted me, and I said hello to him. And then I said to him, uh, how was Pesach? And he said, oh, it was wonderful. But he said, I want you to know that at the Seder, we open the door, and you guys say that Elijah comes. And Elijah wasn't there. And he got a big laugh. So I was a little offended, if you wish, not on a personal basis, but I was a little sensitive to what he said because he was like making fun. And so I responded by saying something, and I said as follows, no, Elliot, I'm sorry. He did come. But you know when he came? He came to the second Seder, and you weren't there. He didn't celebrate a second Seder. And there's a little bit of depth to that answer. You see, people who don't celebrate the second Seder in the diaspora, that's because perhaps they don't really anticipate a redemption. They don't see themselves in Gullus in exile anymore. They're not looking forward to the ultimate ingathering of the exiles from around the entire world and the rebuilding of Abbas Amigdash with the ushering in of the Messianic era. And so there is no second Seder. And Elio comes and he looks, where are you? And they're not there. But we who are indeed touched and inspired by the spirit of what this Leil Shimurim is all about, the night of protection, but also the night of anticipation, we indeed invite Elio there. And he comes. And hopefully his spirit therefore infuses the Seder, and us. Perhaps we may also suggest that this is why the word in Hebrew has the two meanings. Why does the same word in Hebrew mean to anticipate and also mean to protect? And if we may be so bold, 
we would suggest that it is because of the fact that our protection comes from our anticipation. What protects us? The very fact that we anticipate the coming of Mashiach and the ultimate redemption. That protects us. That keeps our identity. That allows us to, in fact, remain separate, loyal Jews, loyal to the commandments of the Almighty, because we anticipate something great and grand that's going to happen, and hopefully will happen speedily in our time. This gives a complete different perspective on what we're doing on the Seder night. Of course, we're celebrating that we left, but more important than the fact that we actually left is the fact that we want to celebrate the spirit of the Jewish people celebrating the first Seder. That was the one that they anticipated the redemption. It hadn't happened yet. And our ultimate redemption hasn't happened either. But it will happen. And that's why all of the mitzvahs of the Seder have to take place before midnight, before that time that the first redemption took place when they left Egypt. We will celebrate the same way they did, in anticipation of what's going to happen. Our Seder this year is very easy to anticipate. Is there a Seder that hasn't been affected somewhere in the world? The whole world has been affected and has turned topsy-turvy by this terrible virus that's affecting it. Perhaps there hasn't been a time that the world has been affected in totality since the flood in the time of Noah that destroyed the whole world. Even during World War II, the, uh, Canada, the United States, Mexico, Central America, the entire, all the countries in South America, yes, I mean, it wasn't like they uh, weren't affected by the war. And yes, parents worried if their children would come back, and many of them didn't. And uh, spouses worried about their husbands, and they're, of course, rationing of goods, but it doesn't come close to uh, the people who actually lived in a, in these, in a warlike situation. There were no bombs that fell in the United States or any of the countries that I mentioned. This virus, I think, is affecting uh, virtually uh, the entire world. Maybe it doesn't, hasn't touched Antarctica. I don't know. And so when we sit down at this Seder, and there are people who are sitting completely alone, there are people who originally had plans to have a uh, Seder with many people there at the table. If I may speak personally, the plans in our home were of a full house, of trying to figure out where everyone is going to sleep between the children and the grandchildren, Baruch Hashem. And now nobody's coming. And there are people who are completely alone because they have to be alone. There are parents and children and grandparents who live near each other who are not going to be together because they can't leave their home. But that happened, you know, in Egypt too. When those Jews celebrated the first Seder, they were commanded, don't leave your home. It's dangerous. Stay inside and you will be protected. And they celebrated because as dangerous as it was to leave their homes, they were very confident that ultimately they could anticipate what was going to happen. To them, it was a living reality. They packed their bags. They're ready to go. They are leaving soon. Let's celebrate already because it's going to happen in just a matter of hours. So we also are going to be sitting in our homes. And some of us can't leave the home. And we'll have a Seder, but it should be infused with the, with the spirit of anticipation. Great things will be coming to the Jewish people. Wonderful things that we can anticipate. And Elio will be coming to our Seder. And we'll open the door for him. And we will pour a cup of wine for him. And his spirit will be there. And it will inspire us to hopefully anticipate Make plans because of that anticipation. Recognize that there are great days ahead of us. Hopefully healthier days for ourselves, for our families, for our communities. 
and thereby ultimately, hopefully speedily in our time, that wonderful anticipation that we will have, that we will cultivate, will allow us to be courageous and inspire us to be great Jews. And if we are great, the Almighty will reward us, and Elio will be sent, and he'll be tell us about the wonderful news that hopefully will be coming. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu grant you all a Chag Kosher V'Sameach, a happy and a kosher Pesach, an inspiring Pesach, a healthy Pesach. And may HaKadosh Baruch Hu grant that if indeed we have to celebrate the Pesach this year, that in fact reflects a poor celebration, it will ultimately be one that will inspire us to great things. God will protect us. God will help us. God will shield us. God will send us good health as well. Have a wonderful Yontif, a healthy Yontif, and may all of you stay healthy and may we share good news one with another.